everyone. Today we would like to introduce you to a topic that has captivated us so much that we decided to make a video about it. The 10 greatest sailing ships ever built and their stories. In May 2021 we took over a sailing ship that was built in 1903, which makes it already one of the real old timers on the seas. As an example, our ship, the Stahlratte, is 38.5 meters long and 6.6 .6 meters wide with two masts, which already makes her quite an imposing lady. But did you know that already in 1891 sailing ships with more than 100 meters length and five masts crossed the oceans? Measured in 2021, this is already 130 years ago when these sailing ships transported thousands of tons of cargo from one port to another. Out of interest, we spent a long time poring over the ship reading books and researching Wikipedia. And now we'd like to introduce you to the 10 largest sailing ships ever built and tell their stories about them. Number 10. The France of France 1. Sailed under the French flag. Her home port was Dunkirk. Her shipyard was DNV Henderson and Son in Glasgow, Scotland. She was launched on the 2nd of September 1890 and sank on the 10th of May 1901. She could carry 6,200 tons of cargo, but this capacity was never exhausted. Nevertheless, with her 133 meters length overall, she's one of the largest sailing ships ever built. Her beam was 14.83 meters with a draft of 6.5 meters. 45 men crewed the France 1. With 5 masts, she had a sail area of 4550 square meters and could make 17 knots of speed, equivalent to 31 km per hour. The France 1 was the first bark in the world with 5 masts. She was intended to carry Sir Petra and coal between Europe, Brazil and Chile. Until the construction of the Potosi, she was the largest sailing ship in the world. During her maiden voyage to Valparaiso, she carried up to about 5,900 tons of coal. In the San Pedro port of Ichiche in Chile, the crew managed to unload 5,000 tons of coal and load 5,500 tons of San Pedro in record time with the help of the four steam loading cranes, those setting a world record. On the 25th of January 1897, she anchored off England loaded with 6,000 tons of Sir Petra after a 79-day voyage from Ichiche. Instead of the usual anchor light, she set another at the stern of the ship. During the night she was rammed amidships by the Blenheim, whose captain mistook the francs for two fishing boats he was trying to pass midships. Although he was able to initiate a turning maneuver at the last moment, he struck the starboard side of the sailor hard. The non-standard stern anchor light was considered by the British Maritime Authority to be the source of the error. The Borders and Folds Shipping Company never accepted this decision, but had to comply with it. In the opinion of some seamen, the France was not the same after the repair as she was before the accident. Nevertheless, she made her best voyage on her next departure in 1898 from England to Chile in only 63 days. This was followed by three more voyages to South America and back to Europe in less than 80 days of sailing per voyage. On the 10th of May 1901, the France was on her way from England to Valparaiso. Off the Brazilian coast, she ran into a violent storm. The coal cargo slipped and could not be righted despite the greatest offers. The fact that the Franks was a very slender ship, that is to say had a tendency to heal with a delayed right tendency, eventually caused her to capsize. The entire crew was rescued by the Hebe 2, a four-masted bark, which found the Franks 1 adrift of the Brazilian coast. After the lucky rescue, the France was sighted once more as a ghost ship before she finally sank. Conspicuous features of this ship were the four steam winches mounted on deck to aid in loading, unloading and sailing operations. 
Floatable double bottom tanks increase the safety of the ship by allowing stability to be regulated with them. Her five masts were made of steel. Number 9. The Potosi. She sailed under the flag of the German Empire, later under the flag of Chile under the name Flora. She was built as a cargo sailor and had Hamburg as her registered home port. She had her launching in 1895 and the construction cost was about 700.000 marks. She had a length of 132.89 meters, a breadth of 15.15 meters with a draught of 7.77 meters. The crew consisted of 40 to 44 men. The bark had 5 masts and 39 sails with a sail area of 5,250 square meters. Her carrying capacity was 6,500 tons. One mast was 64.3 meters high. The Potosi was built by the Tecklenburg shipyard in Geestemünde. The rig with which she sailed was built only 6 times in total, including the Franks and the Mariah Rigmas. Before the Preussen was put into service in 1902, she was the world's largest sailing ship. According to the prevailing custom of the Lyes Shipping Company since 1875, the ship was given a name beginning with P, Potosi after Bolivian mining town, though she was among the flying P-liners. Primarily, this ship was prepared for Salpetro voyages from Chile to Germany. She was a fast ship, but took on a lot of water when fully loaded and heavily healed. The ship had no auxiliary propulsion and for safety reasons was taken upriver to the port of Hamburg with Turk assistance up an arrival in Cuxhaven. Regarding the flying P-liners, it should be said that these sailing ships of the Lyes Shipping Company were known for their safety and speed and we are respectfully given this name by seamen. Their reliability was close to that of a liner. At the time, an average of 3% of sailing ships were lost each year, while only 0.9% of P-liners were lost. In addition, not a single P-liner was lost through its own fault. The secret of success was always the latest technical state of the art, the much stronger construction and the excellent maintenance, especially of the wooden ships. The storm-proof ships sought shelter less often than others and were those faster. Due to their good reputation, the Lyes Shipping Company found good captains and skilled seamen. In 1904, the Potosi set a record by completing the Chile-England voyage in only 57 days. The return trip took 59 days. Between 1896 and 1914, the Potosi never took more than 86 days on any voyages from Chile to England. Number 8. The Maria Rickmas sailed under the flag of the German Empire. Homeport was Bremerhaven in Germany. The construction cost of this cargo ship was 926.000 marks. She had her launching in 1891 and was put into service on the 1st of March 1892. This sailing ship had a length of 135 meters overall with a beam of 14.63 meters and a draft of 7.2 meters. A crew of 38 kept the ship afloat. With five masts, the Rigmas had a 44 sailed with a sail area of 5,300 square meters. Her maximum speed was 15 knots, equivalent to 28 km per hour and a dead weight tonnage of 5,300 tons. The Mariah Rigmas was the second five-masted bark in the world merchant fleet after the Franks. She was equipped with a steam engine for propulsion which made her pass more as a sailing steamer. This ship was launched from a shipyard in Scotland and was built for the Rigmas Reismund Shipping Company. She was named Maria Rigmas after the wife of Peter Rigmas, who was one of the company owners. The ship had three decks and was the only five-masted sailing ship to sail with sky sails on the foremast, mainmast and centermast. Again, the steam engine, coal hold and additional crew would have reduced the profitability of the ship in the long run, which never became noticeable on the ship, as her maiden voyages was her first and also her last. She sailed from Bremerhaven to Barry in Wales and on the Singapore with a cargo of coal. There the captain fell ill and died a few days later in a hospital. The first mate took over the ship's commune. 
Shortly before the captain fell ill, a telegram was delivered to the shipping company expressing displeasure at 80s day voyages without use of the steam-powered auxiliary engines. It continued on to Saigon, where a cargo of 56,727 bags of rice was taken on for Rigmas Rice Mule in GmbH. On her voyage home towards Bremerhaven, she was lost in the Indian Ocean after passing the Sunda Strait. She sent her last signal to Enya Point in Indonesia on the 24th of July 1982. It is generally reported that the Mariah Rigmas was never heard from again and no wreckage was found, leading to a number of terrorists such as typhoons, white booms, pirates, capsizing and so on. In contrast, the diary of James Thomas Aikman reports about the sinking of the Mariah Rigmas in the Sunda Strait during a typhoon and that corresponding wreck was found there afterwards. The ship was the largest sailing ship of its time, even though it existed only seven months. This is the shortest lifespan of the seven five-mass warships. Number 7. The Wyoming sailed under the US flag. She was a six-masted gaff schooner from Bass, Maine and is considered the largest wooden schooner, the largest six-masted schooner and the largest wooden ship ever built. Her length overall was 137.2 meters, her beam 15.2 meters. She had a draft of 9.3 meters. Her construction cost was $175,000 and she was commissioned on the 21st of December 1902. 13 to 14 men cost to operate with the Gaff schooner. With six masts she had 22 sails with a sail area of 3,700 square meters. She could travel at 16 knots or 30 km per hour. Her dead weight capacity was 6,100 tons. The hull of the Wyoming was built of pine and reinforced with iron. The jib boom alone, which is the wooden mass that peaks out in front of the ship, measured a whopping 30 meters. The ship was named after the state of Wyoming because the seventh governor of Wyoming, Brian B. Brooks, was an investor on the ship. The ship could not be named after the governor himself because a five-mast gaff schooner already bore his name. The ship could sail with a small crew of 13-14 men because there were steam-powered auxiliary units. She was considered a beautiful and imposing ship and despite her size was easy to navigate like a yacht. As with all wooden schooners, her wooden hull suffered from the stress of cargo and sea state. The ship had to be constantly barged from the beginning which meant that water that had entered had to be pumped out via pumps. Because of its size and wooden construction, it had great problems at sea and therefore sailed close to shore whenever it's possible. The Wyoming was launched fully rigged in Maine on the 15th of December 1902, the last of New England's nine wooden six-masted gaff schooners. The firm of Percy and Small was the largest schooner building yard in New England, launching seven of New England's 10 six-masted gas schooners alone. Six-masted schooners were a relatively rare type of vessel and always brought spectators into the harbors as they sailed in and out. The Wyoming at 7,718 GRT, the largest sail ever built. In the course of her 14 year existed, she changed owners three times. On the 11th of March 1924, the large schooner sank with coal deeply loaded on the voyage from Norfolk, Virginia to New Brunswick as a result of a storm. All 13 seamen including the captain died in her sinking. Despite an incentive search, the wreck could not be found initially. Today it is believed that the keel, which was deep in the water due to heavy cargo, touched bottom in the shallow seas and broke, and as a result the ship sank. Another Persian small schooner, the Coral F. Cressy, lay alongside the Wyoming for two days, also waiting for better weather. The captain of this ship, as the storm grew stronger, wagged anchor and sowed the open sea under storm sails. Ship and crew survived the storm. Briefly, as an addendum to explain the measure GRT, cross registerton. This is an absolute special measure for the size of merchant ships. Ron register ton is equivalent to 100 English cubic feet or 2.83 cubic meters. It cannot be countered into tons. This is because GRT is a special measure 
and has nothing to do with the weight of the ship. Number 6, the Thomas W. Lawson was the only seven-masted schooner in the world merchant fleet as well as the largest sailing ship ever built without auxiliary propulsion, the largest schooner ever built and the only seven-masted ship ever built. She was one of a few steel-built ships of the late United States sailing era. She was built as a cargo sailor and sailed under the US flag. Her construction cost at the time was $348,000 and her launch was a 1902. The Thomas W. Lawson had a length of 140.1 meters overall and a beam of 15.25 meters with a draft of 10.71 meters. She had 16, 18 crew members, 7 masts and 25 sails with a sail area of 4,330 square meters. Her maximum speed under sail was 60 knots, this is to say 30 km per hour. She could carry 7,500 tons. The Lawson was launched in the same year as the Preussen. The Thomas W. Lawson was intended to haul large quantities of coal for the Bay State Gas Co. on behalf of her owner, whose president was the ship's namesake. Because of the unusual full load of 11,000 tons, she was chartered out in 1903 as a tug with emergency sails for crate oil after the Strangons had been unrigged. After conversion as a sailing tanker in 1906, she was also to undertake transatlantic voyages, but before the end of her first Atlantic voyage she was wrecked in a storm with a cargo of light oil in the early hours on the 14th of September 1907 of the Scilly Isles. The oil spile that resulted from this accident is considered to be the first since the history of seafaring. It should be mentioned that bad weather with difficult visibility and wrong course calculation brought the Lawson too close to a rocky coast of the two islands St. Agnes and St. Mary's where she anchored in order not to drift further. The pilot was taken aboard to maneuver the ship out of its predicament. As the storm continued to increase, the pilot tried in vain to persuade the captain to maneuver the schooner out of the area into safe waters, despite the few sails intact and totally exhaust the crew, which might well have been an option and possible rescue. Around 1 am the storm reached force 9 and gradually both anchor canes broke. The ship was at the mercy of the open sea. The captain was still ordering life jackets to be put on and to get into the mess when the ship was thrown against the rocky islands and rolled against them several times, breaking the mess and costing the lives of 17 of the 19 crew members, including the pilot. A machinist and the captain survived the accident. It was long debated whether Captain George W. Doe had made a bad decision to trust his anchor chains more than his crew and pilot. All these could not be established beyond doubt. With less swell and a more favorable tide, he could have survived the stormy night. Today the wreck, which is 70 meters deep, is an attraction for recreational divers. The Thomas William Lawson was one of only three steel tall ships built in the United States. 20,000 people were present for the ship is christening. All habitable rooms, even those of the ordinary seamen, had steam heating, since the draught of more than 10 meters envisaged by the designer exceeded the water depths of the east coast ports of the time, with the expectation of Newport News in Virginia, the originally envisaged cargo capacity had to be reduced by about one third. This meant a considerable cut in the hope for profitability. According to some sailors and naval writers, the Lawson was a ship that was difficult to navigate and not very, very beautiful. And not very beautiful. There were comparisons with a bass hub and a beach whale, and in paintings people always tried to make her look sleeker than she really was. She often had groundings due to her draught and then had to be towered free again. Sailing maneuvers were very extremely demanding for the small crew. As the only ship of its kind and an imposing one of that, it nevertheless made history. Number 5. The SYA, Sailing Yacht A, still named White Pearl during its construction phase, sails under the flag of Bermuda. She is a sailing yacht owned by the Russian billionaire and oligarch Andrei Menichenko. When commissioned, the White Pearl will be the largest sailing yacht in the world with a length of 143 meters overall. 
The construction of the ship is said to have cost around 400 million euros. Her home port is Hamilton, her launch was in 2014 and she was built by the German shipyard Nobiskrug. The exact length overall is 142.81 meters and the beam is 24.88 meters. She has a draft of maximum 8 meters and a crew of 54 men. Sailing Yacht A has three masts with three sails with a sail area of 3,700 square meters. She had a deadweight capacity of 1,450 tons. While a German shipyard built a ship, the keel construction and rigging come from the Netherlands. The sails come from the USA and the teak was supplied by a company from Valencia. 1,278 teak elements were installed. The non-profit environmental organization EIA was able to prove on the basis of DNA analysis that the teak wood came from illegal plantations in Myanmar. The Federal Agency for Agriculture and Food, which was informed by the WWF, later had to deal with the accusation that it had placed itself protectively in front of the shipyard when it processed the illegally felled wood. The first test run took place on the 21st of September 2015. The height of the three masts is around 90 meters. This makes them largest freestanding, that is to say unstayed, masts ever built from carbon. The Southern English production company worked for three years on the developed end manufacture. The largest single sail covers 1767 square meters of sail area. All sails are set fully automatically. Due to the high mass, SYA can only leave the Baltic Sea through Drogden, an 8 meter deep small canal between Amaga and Saltum in the Öresund. The yacht had a total of 8 decks. The keel is formed of curved glass at the lower end so that you can observe the underwater world. In addition to various tenders, the SYA also has her own submarine. The steel hull is covered with a special plastic layer. Besides the sails, SYA has two diesel generators with 3600 kW each and two electric motors with 4300 kW. For power supply, there are four diesel generators with 2800 kW each, which equals 50,228 horsepower when using all four generators. The maximum speed is given as 21 knots, that is to say 39 km per hour. Her range under engine at 60 knots is 5320 nautical miles. On the 27th of January 2017, the ship was commissioned and on the 3rd of February 2017, the Nobiskrug shipyard officially delivered the yacht without the owner himself being present. After various disputes over missing payments, the owner and the shipyard finally reached an agreement and SYA set course for Cartagena. Number 4. The RC Rigmas first sailed under the flag of the German Empire and then under the English flag with the name Nice. Her home port was Bremerhaven in Germany before being interned to Cardiff. She was launched in 1906. The RC Rigmas was in 5 mast with a length of 146 meters and 16.3 meters beam. She had a draft of 8.2 meters, about 55 man crew the ship needed. The sail area was 6000 square meters with 38 to 40 sails. Her maximum speed was 60 knots, that is to say 30 kilometers per hour. When she was launched, her cargo capacity of 5548 GRT exceeded even the Preussen by 467 GRT. She was the second German five-masted bark and the fifth square rigged ship with five masts in the world merchant fleet. As auxiliary propulsion, she was equipped with a steam engine. After two wooden full rigged ships, she was the third ship to bear this name. Later, three more cargo ships with this name followed. After the accidents of the Preussen and the Thomas W. Lawson, she was the largest sailing ship in the world until the launching of the Franx. In 1914 she was seized as war booty and renamed Nice. She was built for Rigmas Rice Mühlen Reederei and Schiffsbau AG at their in-house shipyard in Geestemünde, Germany. Hull, masts and yards were made of steel. 
named after the company's founder Rigmar Klaasen Rigmas, she was to replace the Maria Rigmas, which had been lost on their maiden voyage. Like all Rigmas ships, she was painted in the colors green and red and was considered a prestige building and answer to the two lies five mast ships Potosi and Preussen. As already mentioned, with her 5548 cross tons, she even surpassed the Preussen. But because of her steam engine, she was never registered as Germans. Ge she was never registered as Germany's largest sailing ship. Some sailors called her a sailing steamer rather than a sailing ship, precisely because of this engine and the huge small stack behind the center mast. Her cargo capacity and those her economy were reduced by the 600 ton coal bunker. The large ship nevertheless caused a sensation, especially in the USA. Because of its size, the RC Rigmas needed a specially trained crew, since not all captains and sailors understood how to run a five-masted square rigger. This became apparent later in the war, when the British asked the intern captain to explain the ship's command and the sailing commands to them, since they had no experience with five-masted square riggers in England. The main destinations were East Asia, Siberia, the US West Coast, Australia and South America. The ship mostly carried coal on its way out and mainly rice on its way home. A special event in 1912 was the visit of Tsar Nicholas II. Because of the coal bunker which reduced cargo space, the additional personnel needed for the steam engine and the coal consumption, the RC Rigmas was soon no longer economically viable. During the conversion to steam between 1910 and 1913, the Rigmas shipping company disposed of all its tall ships. No buyer was found for the large bark, which is why the shipping company converted the ship into a sail training ship in 1913-14. At the beginning of World War I, the RC Rigmas was buried in Cardiff, England, to receive a cargo of coal and was seized there by the British Admiralty. Sailing under the English flag, the RC Rigmas was sunk southeast of Ireland by a German Imperial Navy submarine on the 27th of March 1917 with a cargo of sugar coming from Mauritius. Number 3. The France 2. She sailed as the name suggests under the French flag. She made her maiden voyage on the 25th of November 1913 and her home port was Rowan and Franks. The France II was a five-master commissioned in 1911 and completed in 1913. She was 146.5 meters long and 16.96 meters wide with a draft of 11.10 meters. She was also built as a cargo sailor. Until 1919 the France II with two diesel engines required a maximum of 45 crew after the engines were removed in 1919. 50 crew members were in service. She had a sail area of 6,350 square meters with 38 sails. Her maximum speed was 70.5 knots, that is to say 32.4 km per hour. She had the largest cargo capacity ever with 5,633 cross tons. For comparison, the RC Rigmas could load 5,548 cross tons. In hull length and overall size, she was the second largest commercial merchant sailing vessel ever built, after the Preussen. Similar to the Preussen, the masts of the France II were also made of steel. She was known for her beautiful wood-lined lounge, which included a piano. She also had seven first-class cabins and a library. She was built in 1911 at the Chantier et Atelier de la Gironde Chepia on the banks of the Gironde River in Bordeaux. According to plans by chief designer Gustave Leverne, the ship was intended for nickel or trade and mostly sailed the route France, Australia, New Caledonia and USA. The huge bark was equipped with two 950 horsepower Schneider diesel engines, which were removed in 1919. On a 1922 voyage home with a cargo of chrome ore from Pombot, New Caledonia, she beached on Teremba Reef in Uri Bay, nearly 60 nautical miles northwest of Noumea on the night of the 12th of July 1922. Because of sunk freight rates, her owner refused to pay a tug to tow her free. 
1944, American bombers bombed the wreck for target practice. In 1995, plans began to raise funds to rebuild the Franks II, but with little success. The Golden Horizon, which will begin her maiden voyage in 2021, was built on the basis of the Franks II. Number 2. The Preussen sailed under the flag of the German Empire. Commissioning was in 1902, the home port was Hamburg in Germany. The Preussen was a five-master launch in 1902. She was 147 meters long and 60.34 meters wide with a draft of 8.26 meters. Built as a cargo sailor, the construction cost until launch was 900,000 marks. With a crew of 46, she had a sail area of 6,806 square meters with 47 sails. Her maximum speed was 20.5 knots. 38 km per hour. She could carry up to 8,000 tons of cargo. The Preussen was the largest and fastest ship of the Flying P line of the Lies Shipping Company. Due to her excellent sailing characteristics, she was easy to maneuver, even though two or four men had to hold the two measures high double rotor wheel at wind force 8. Even at wind force 9, she could still tack. The height of the highest mast was a whooping. 68 meters. The main sail had a length of 32 meters. By comparison, the Stahlratte had an overall length of 38.5 meters. In her day, British sailors considered her the fastest sailor. The record voyage to Ichicha in Chile in only 57 days in 1903 was proof enough and was never surpassed by another sailor. From the 11th of July to the 6th of August 1908, she covered 6,944 nautical miles in two in 27 days, equivalent to 12,860 kilometers. So on average, she sailed at 10.72 knots, which is equivalent to 19.7 kilometers per hour. Most of the time, she sailed to Chile. The English Cutty Zark, famous for its fast voyages, carried 1,700 tons with 35 men at the time. The Preussen, on the other hand, carried 7,874 tons with 45 to 49 men. Four and a half times that of the Cutty Zark with only 10 men more crew. On the 6th of November 1910, the Preussen collided in the English Channel with the British steamer Brighton which crossed in front of the ship's bow contrary to regulations. When they tried to bring her into the harbor of Dover with three tugs, the tosses broke because of an upcoming storm, and the Preussen stranded on the cliffs in front of the saving harbor after the crew tried in vain to sail her free on their own. Not even 12 tugs managed to free the full rigged ship. The valuable cargo, including pianos, was salvaged, and even a year later it was hoped that the Preussen could be saved. In vain, the wreck fell into disrepair over time, and over the years the Lies Shipping Company lost the two large sailing ships Pangani and Pike Lorry in the English Channel through collisions with steamships. Conversely, two steamships sank due to collisions with the sailing ship Pisagua and Passat. In all cases, the steamships crossed in front of the sailor contrary to regulations or took the wrong way out. The Golden Horizon was built on the model of the Preussen and the Franks II. Until the construction of this luxury ship, the Preussen was the only five-masted full-rigged ship I ever built and also reached the maximum in the number of sails with 30 square sails. Number 1. The Golden Horizon, previously named Flying Clipper, will sail under the Croatian flag. She is scheduled to enter service in 2021. Her home port is split in Croatia. The ship is a five master that had its launch in 2017. Her maiden voyage is planned for November 2021 in the Caribbean. The ship is 162.11 meters long and 18.29 meters wide. It has a side height of 12.4 meters and a maximum draft of 6.4 meters. The normal crew is 139, plus the Golden Horizon can accommodate 272 guests. She has a sail area of 6347 square meters with 36 sails. Her maximum speed is 60 knots under engine and 20 knots under sail, which corresponds to 37 km per hour. 
Her dead weight capacity is 2100 tons. Although the ship has not yet sailed the world's oceans, her two name results from disputes with the Bodo Split shipyard in Croatia. As Flying Clipper she was supposed to sail for the shipping company Star Clippers. Subsequently the Chartres startup Tradewind Voyages took over the use of the ship. The Golden Horizon was designed as a luxury passenger ship. Some say it is based on the famous Franks too. Others say it was modeled after the Preussen. Whatever the case, the Golden Horizon clearly surpassed both ships in length. She is the largest square rig sailing ship ever built in terms of space. The ship offers all the comforts of a modern cruise ship, including several swimming pools, restaurants and bars, saunas and its own navy with water sport equipment. With its two electric motors, it is said to have a range of 2000 nautical miles. The ship is to offer voyages around the globe and sail the classic sailing routes on the world's oceans. So folks, those were the 10 largest sailing ships and their stories. Of course, there are many more impressive ships and even more exciting stories, but we will tell you about them in other videos. We have deliberately told the story of each ship, but also refrained from two detailed embellishments and expert word powers. We hope you liked it. If you have any questions, you are missing something or you would like to see a video about a certain topic, please write it to us in the comments. At the moment we are on the seas ourselves with 28 men. If you are interested, have a look at our vlogs. You can find them in the info box above and in the video description. See you soon and always had a hand's breath of water under the keel.